Is the X-Shot Pro Long Shot tournament ready out of the box? I need to preface this video with the fact that this blaster is $30. For context, the other blasters I've reviewed in this series so far have cost this much. So keep that in mind for the rest of the video. As always, we'll start with performance. Depending on the dart type, you're looking at ranges from the mid 140s to 150s. And despite what's on the screen right now, I want to make a note that the AF Pros had a single outlier shot that raised the spread in standard deviation. If that outlier is removed, it was easily the most consistent dart type with the stock setup. Really, outside of that one shot, the FPS numbers are better than what I anticipated, with a spread that, while not incredible, is acceptable enough. And when it comes to the groupings, this is where I was utterly blown away by this little bullpup blaster. It felt so consistent that I was just having so much fun nailing the target repeatedly at 40 feet, regardless of the dart type. I thought surely once I move out to 75 feet, the groups will just fall apart due to the lower FPS. And while yes, the spread did increase, it wasn't nearly as much as I anticipated. I did, however, have to start arcing my shots a good amount to get them on target at this range, but that made me think, what about bamboo darts? They're so light I usually don't like using them, but in this particular case, they worked incredibly. This feels like an absurd grouping for this blaster at that range, but its performance really has exceeded my expectations. I also haven't experienced any jams with this blaster. It's got a pretty easy prime, and despite the fact that yes the plastic is on the thinner side i don't feel like i'm just gonna break it by using it outside of one instance i'll get to in a minute here and there isn't really any creaking that makes it feel overly cheap i thought maybe using the stock while extended might cause it to collapse while priming but the prime is light enough that that hasn't been an issue and the grips are comfortable enough and the blaster overall just feels nice in the hand also, a big plus is that while the included mag doesn't fit into Talon mag blasters, the included mag adapter does take Talon mags with no issues. Also, the included mag fits into some of my Talon mag holders as well, so you may be able to integrate the mag into your loadout without too much issue. Something I always appreciate is when a Springer comes with a scar barrel, and the long shot comes with a scar barrel. Unfortunately, it's a bit too big, and it's not going to have quite the level of impact that a properly sized scar may have, but it's still better than not having one at all. Another minor issue I have with the blaster is that you can't deprime it. There's a button on the top rail that allows you to open the breech again, but the spring stays compressed. I don't know if it's the ratcheting prime that prevents this, but it's always something that bothers me. Especially with how this blaster sounds when dry firing, it made me physically recoil out of concern something was going to break. God. While that may be the only time in use I was concerned about the durability of the blaster, there have been reports of people getting their blaster with a cracked plunger tube, so be sure to check before purchasing in store that yours isn't in that condition. There's one personal preference kind of thing for me with this blaster, and that's just that I'm not a big fan of bullpup blasters in general, but this was far from the worst bullpup I've used, and they've included nice little touches like a mag release near the grip if you don't want to use the paddle with your offhand while reloading. It's not a massive thing, but a nice touch. Okay, I've been praising this blaster for what feels like non-stop this video, so let's bring it back to reality for a moment, shall we? Out of the box performance, which is what this series is about, is around 150 FPS, and having to arc your shots to reach out to just 75 feet isn't great for a competitive springer. You aren't going to be sitting on the back line getting tags across the field with a long shot. As much as I love this blaster, that shortcoming has to be acknowledged. As much as I've enjoyed this blaster, I have to say it's not tournament ready out of the box. Unless you're in one of these two situations. First, if you happen to be playing competitive at a lower FPS cap than the typical 200 to 250 that most tournaments run at currently, then this blaster shines. Second, if you're a frontline aggressive player that takes most of your shots at a short to maybe middle range where that FPS gap isn't going to be as detrimental, but you want to use a Springer over flywheels, in that instance, I think this blaster is tournament ready.